Hello, this is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. We're going to take a look at a distance problem today. Um, you'll see that I do have the problem written here. It's a specific type of distance problem. It's called a chase problem. Uh, so if you read this problem, and you can always stop the video to read it if you'd like, uh, we have a helicopter that's trying to catch a boat. So there's a boat that's going south and uh, it's traveling at 60 miles an hour and it's got a two hour head start. So two hours pass and now this helicopter wants to go out there and chase after the boat and catch the boat. So the helicopter obviously is going to have to uh, travel faster than the boat otherwise it's never going to be able to catch the boat. So the helicopter is traveling at 150 miles an hour and the boat is traveling at 60 miles an hour. So there's quite a bit of difference in speed. Um, so we have this problem and uh, we want to solve it and we want to try to make this as simple as possible to understand. So in order to do that uh, I have a table here and I've specifically chosen the headings carefully because I've got rate, time, and distance. If you know anything about rate, time, and distance you know that distance is equal to rate times time. So that's why I have them in that certain order. So I've got rate, time, and distance. That'll help me organize things. All right, so we've got two things in this problem. Uh, so I want to talk about them. So let's see. Hmm, I've got the helicopter, which I'm going to call H. So I'm going to put an H here to represent helicopter. And I've got a boat. So I'm going to put B for boat. All right, well, we know some things about this problem. We know the boat is going at a rate of 60 miles an hour. So I'm going to put 60 miles an hour here for the boat. So the key is there is hours, right? Our time is in hours. Uh, helicopter is traveling at 150. So I'll do, I'll put the 150 right there in for its rate. Um, let's see, I don't know how far these things are going to be traveling. I don't know how much time it's going to take. Uh, you know, for the helicopter and boat to meet, to uh, to reach each other, to actually meet. So uh, normally, what some people would do is say, "Oh, we don't know what time is. We're going to put X for time," and it's just partially correct. See, the problem here is that the boat is traveling longer period of time. It's got a two-hour head start, so we know that the boat's going to be traveling longer. So we have some options here. What we can do is we can, since we know that the boat is traveling for two hours longer, we know that its time, you know, although both of these times are unknown, we're going to use X's, I just know that the boat is, will always travel two hours more time than the helicopter. Okay, so I could do that. I could put that there. Uh, my other option is I could say, and look at it the other way, and say that the helicopter will be traveling for two hours less time because the boat had the two hour head start. Now I, I prefer to always put positives in my problems. I try to stay away from the negatives if I can. So I prefer to put down the plus two. So I know that the boat's been traveling for two hours longer. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, because I'd, I'd like to use only one variable for this problem, is I'm just going to leave the variable x here. Now in order to proceed, you have to know that uh, Again, I kind of reiterate that rate times time is equal to distance. So what I land up doing is I land up multiplying across the table. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm multiplying these things across the table, and that's how I'm going to get the distance over here. Okay, so let's see. Rate 150 times time x is 150x. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to multiply 60 times x plus 2. I've got 60 is being multiplied by x plus 2. Okay, so I've got my distances set up. And I know this is how much distance the helicopter will be traveling. This is how much distance the boat will be traveling. Now, the key to solving this problem is understanding how to build an equation. Uh, and if you really think about this, you will understand that when the helicopter finally reaches the boat they will have traveled the same exact distance okay so that's what's going to happen when they finally meet when the helicopter finally meets, reaches up with that boat that helicopter will be 
will have traveled the same exact distance and will have caught up with the boat. So in other words, when the helicopter's distance, 150x, is equal to the boat's distance, 60x plus 2, we know that they will have met each other and uh, that's it. So we just now are landing up with solving this equation. We have to solve this problem for x. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to solve it for x. So what do we do first? Well, we do the distributive property. So in other words, we're going to leave the left side of this equation alone and multiply 60 times x and then 60 times 2 doing the distributive property. All right, so now to, in order to solve this equation, what we are going to do is subtract 60x from both sides. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to subtract 60x. All right, so that's going to cancel the x's on the right side, and that will give us just x's on the left side. Now I'm going to carry on my work over here. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to just carry it on up over here and continue. All right, so let's see, 150 minus 60 is 90. And you can see that this side just cancels, so you're left with 120 on the right side. All right. Continuing on, in order to uh, continue with that part, we're going to have to divide both sides by 90. So we divide by 90, just showing a little bit of algebra. Okay, so we divide by 90, and let's see, we're going to get x equals, I'm going to do some cleaning up here, and you get 1 and a third, or 1.33333, so that's a, one, that's a third. All right, so what does that mean? What does this mean, this value, x is 1 and a third? That means that the helicopter has to travel x amount of time. Helicopter is going to travel 1 and a third hours. Okay, remember this is in hours. Okay, um, and now we know that the boat is going to travel two hours longer than that, so it's going to be three and a third hours. Okay, so we know that they, they travel at different, you know, lengths of time. So that means, let's say that uh, this uh, boat, let's say if the boat we knew left uh, the Florida Keys at 1 p.m. Let's say the boat. We know that the boat left at 1 p.m. Okay, if the boat leaves at 1 p.m., it's going to be traveling for three and a third hours longer than that, so we would add three and a third. Now, let's get past this third business. It's kind of bothering me. Uh, we should know that a third of an hour is equal to 20 minutes. Okay, so in other words, x is one hour, 20 minutes. All right, now when you understand that, this is going to make sense. Because now if we take a, a 1, 1 p.m., and we add on, now remember, well, let's do the helicopter first. The helicopter is going to take X amount of time. Uh, oh, actually, let, let's do the boat first. So how much time does the boat, uh, because we said this is what time the boat left, the boat leaves at 1 p.m. It spends, remember, two hours longer than X, so that would be three hours and 20 minutes. So that would mean at 4.20 p.m. the helicopter will catch up with it. In other words, that's how much total time will have passed. It's how much time the uh, boat will be in transportation from 1 to 4.20. Uh, remember, the helicopter leaves two hours later. Remember, the helicopter will have been uh, will have left at three o'clock, at three p.m., and will only travel for an hour twenty minutes, and then get arrive at the boat at four twenty. Okay, so you have to kind of understand that time. That time is relative to who's traveling. So we know that x is. I'm going to put this right into the table. X for h for the helicopter is one hour, one hour, 20 minutes. Um, okay, but then we know that the 
boat will have been three hours, 20 minutes. Okay, so that's how much time we know that each of them has traveled. All right, so there you have it. This is how you solve these problems with these chase-like problems. Okay, make sure you go to mathguide.com. Check out our interactive quizzes, our lessons, and our activities. Take care.